Yaha Ling is a wonderful conductor. I've known him for, um, I've known his work for many, many years. He was a longtime resident conductor of the Cleveland Orchestra, one of our great orchestras in the world. And um, then recently music director of the San Diego Symphony for about 20 years. So um, he's a fantastic musician and I know that uh, our musicians are gonna love working with him and, and our audiences are gonna love what he produces on stage. When the guest conductors come in, I have um, such a fun experience. Uh, it's really nice to just kind of see what they bring to the concert set, and it's its own thing. And so it's kind of nice to just experience that, kind of live in the moment, and give a great concert for the audience with them at the podium. You never know what you're getting with a guest conductor. So I think for everyone, um, we're a little bit on our toes, a little bit on the edge of our seat to see what the experience will be like. But it's like any time you go to a different educator or any type of different person in your life, they bring out different things. And it's sometimes things that we have gotten accustomed to in our own playing and the guest conductor just might expect something different. So it's a fun challenge. John Harbison wrote uh, the sketches to this opera in the early 1980s, and actually the, the piece that we're playing was, was premiered in 1985. I was at the world premiere with the Atlanta Symphony. Uh, the opening is sort of serene and beautiful. It's contemplative. Uh, Gatsby's looking across the water and sees the green light where um, his uh, love interest uh, lives. Uh, then it morphs into kind of a foxtrot, which is a fast uh, sort of 30s and 40s popular dance. The ending is, is pretty interesting because there's a phone ringing and there's a car horn. And those are two significant sounds that actually eventually became the downfall of Gatsby. But that's what the piece is about. And it's a terrific piece to open a program with. Beethoven's third piano concerto is a big stepping stone in his output for the piano and orchestra. The first two concerti were in the classical style and very much reflected the influence of Mozart. But in this one, we're really getting Beethoven as his own composer and his own voice. And in fact, he was the soloist for the premiere at this premiere performance. In fact, uh, he had very little music. Almost everything was in his head as far as the piano part, while the orchestra had their parts written out. And it's a work that um, you can see that he's going to be moving toward the even more adventurous style that he's gonna have in his fourth piano concerto. Janice Carissa is our artist for, uh, for this program. She's an emerging uh, artist. She's studying at the Curtis Institute, already has a, a career going. She has uh, played a recital at the Kennedy Center in Washington, D.C., also played in Carnegie Hall, also premiered with the Philadelphia Orchestra, debuted in, with the Philadelphia Orchestra. So her talent is, uh, is vast, and she will have a wonderful career throughout the world. And uh, the piece she's going to play is a uh, um, youthful piece, an exuberant piece by Beethoven, his third piano concerto. It's one of the more uh, lyric and, uh, and joyful pieces that he wrote. My favorite piece from this concert set is Shostakovich's Fifth Symphony. And actually it's one of my favorites of all time, just because we have eerie and mysterious, and then we have gut-wrenching melodies, and just it's so absolutely powerful. It's a little bit of everything. Well, Shasti V is one of the pieces that uh, means a great deal to me because it was the very first thing that I ever performed with a quote unquote real orchestra. Um, I was the principal trumpet of the Kansas All State Orchestra. This would have been 1991, and we played the finale of Shostakovich V. And um, just being with a full symphonic orchestra for the first time and getting to play that um, it just every time I hear it, it it speaks to me and I have fond memories of that performance it's a wonderful cohesive program because it gives us a variety of moods and feelings. The Shostakovich Five is a heavy work. Uh, even the moments that are lighter are more grotesque than they are just light. So something like Remembering Gatsby is a great way to work into and balance this kind of program because it is light and it is more abstract and brighter. And the Beethoven in the middle allows us one to highlight a soloist 
and two, to highlight Beethoven, because this is a season of celebrating Beethoven. And it also is a, a work that is leaning toward the Romantic tradition, but rooted in the classical tradition. So again, we're getting a variety of different styles, moods, feelings, and approaches to composition.